like to hand you over to Anand Maturi, who will uh, start us off with a 10 minute presentation. Thanks, Anand, over to you. Hello, everyone. Uh, pleasure to be here. Uh, thank you, Arctox, Ralph, for organizing this session. Delighted to be presenting to you all. Uh, next 10 minutes, I'm going to talk about digital twins and how uh, it is uh, critical to drive transformation in the post construction asset management world. I'm Anand Micheri. I'm the CEO of Indicara. Uh, by way of brief introduction, Invicara uh, is the developer of Twinit.io. Uh, it's a platform that we and our partners utilize to create highly customized digital twin solutions for the built environment. Um, I'm going to dive right in and talk about what's the bridge between BIM and digital twins and start the conversation from there. So, uh, <clears throat> before that, Quickly, what is a digital twin? There's, there's always this question that comes up when, when we have conversations. Is BIM a digital twin? Is digital twin something else? Let me use a few statements from the digital twin consortium uh, to, to explain the differences. Firstly, a digital twin is a virtual representation, and I think everyone agrees it's a virtual representation of a real world entity or a process. But the important piece is that the twin is, is synchronized with the physical, with the physical entity, the real world entity at a certain frequency and detail or fidelity. And that's really important to keep in mind. Uh, the second part is that the digital twin uh, concept is very much driven by use cases, very much driven by outcomes. So you can't say here is a product, is here is a digital twin that does, that, that does 20 things. No. Uh, we've got to be very deliberate about defining what a digital twin is, uh, define the use cases, uh, leverage the data to drive those use cases, and apply them in a, in a platform, an IT, OT platform, to drive those outcomes into success. And when we do implement a digital twin, obviously you get the transparency, the, the visibility, the performance of the business, of the asset, which drives uh, improved outcomes for the asset owner in our case. So that's a you know, high level view of what a digital twin is. Now, talking about BIM and how it translates into digital twins, the first step is we talked about defining use cases. Now, whether it's for, for delivering a good outcome from the BIM process or to deliver a digital twin in the end, uh, definition of the use cases is going to be vital. And once you have done that, then comes you know, the stage where all the information managers are going to be focused on during the development phase of the project, which is about defining and managing the BIM data workflows, making sure the models are classified. What is classification? It's a way of ensuring that machines can understand models uh, in, in the way that it's supposed to be understood. So classifying models, making sure that the models, uh, the required parameters are defined, making sure that data is gathered, making sure that data is validated. Uh, it's not just the data in the models, it may also be relating to documents. Now, all of that is in the, in the, in the wheelhouse of of all of us as information managers, right? So that's the piece that contributes very heavily to the success of a digital twin. Once you have done that, we can then extract and transform the, the graphics and the data and the documents into a digital twin platform that, that then allows us to extend the data model and start connecting it with data sets that's outside the realm of BIM. BIM. It could be BMS, IoT systems, uh, enterprise applications, so you start bringing the real time data sets into the twin uh, and that starts making the twin data set uh, more complete. Uh, when we have done that, it, it then from a digital twin point of view, it's vital to start expressing these data sets as knowledge graphs. A knowledge graph is like how a social media platform knows everything about everybody. It knows who you are, who are you connected with, when did you go to you know, which restaurant, at what point in time, it knows everything. Likewise, a digital twin needs to have context to what is what in an asset, uh, all the relationships uh, uh, between those entities and the data relating to that. And when we have that, we are then able to build analytics and dashboards to be able to drive the outcomes that we are targeting to achieve. And the last step then is once you've got the data, once you've organized the data, you are then able to compose you know, role-based user interfaces, build integrations into applications, uh, to create the outcome. So a digital twin is founded on good BIM, on good information management, because if you don't have that in place, everything else is going to be garbage. You can put a lot of get a lot of, get a lot of good data, build a lot of good integrations, but if it's going to be built on top of bad data, it, it's not going to be successful. 
So BIM and information management is vital for this post occupancy uh, strategy based on digital twins. I'm going to take an example of just to illustrate this a little bit further uh, in another context. Let's take the example of maps. OK, so if you look at this map, this is a, a map that something like uh, equated to the architectural model in BIM, right? So you have the base layer, you have the information about what is what, what is where. It needs to, everything in this in this mod, in this map needs to be classified. It should be selectable, searchable um, uh, by a machine, by, by different applications. And then you add more information to it, like the structural model. You add you add more information about, in this case, the, the topography. And then you add more information, maybe like how you bring the mechanical, electrical, and plumbing systems together. So when you bring it all together, you have a set of maps. What you still have is not a digital twin. It's a set of maps, but searchable, organized, object-oriented information. When we put this in the hands of you and me, and we use it to navigate ourselves, we then start producing information. And that information becomes, comes, you know, combines back with the maps to create the digital twin. Now we can see that there is traffic on the roads and which roads are congested, which roads are free. Um, and then you start bringing information about uh, hotels, you know, locations and uh, uh, reservation systems, the real time uh, uh, prices that the hotels are publishing. Uh, it could be about transportation. How do I get from A to B? Do I take public transport or do I use a taxi? OK, I need to get from my home to the city in Dublin and it's going to cost me uh, 40 euros by Uber or I can take the public transport at three euros and it's going to be just seven minutes more. So I pick the public transport. So we can see that the digital twin is now becoming a, a decision support system, right? But you need the base layers, you need the base data. You put that in the hands of people, they start using it, they produce new information. And you, when you bring that data together, you get that cognitive uh, uh, picture of or capability to drive decisions. Same idea. Digital twins are exactly for the built environment is exactly the same. Now, coming back to BIM and really how do we deliver a twin? As we talked about, we start with uh, strategy and planning. We define the use cases. Once we have the use cases, we, we establish the information requirements. Once we have the requirements, we run through the information management process where we are able to, uh, you know, where we must classify the models, where we must validate the data in those models. And once that is done, you start having a, a good foundation to create what I would call an asset twin. An asset twin is a is a digital manual of your facility. It, uh, as you develop the, the 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 go through the construction process, commissioning process, there's information coming in from the field. There is handover documents. You are you are then able to compose how the systems are deployed, how they serve different spaces, and all of that together becomes the the digital handover to the client. As an asset twin, it's an excellent way to, to deal with uh, adding value to the BIM process, delivering something to the asset owner to operate the facility. Mm -hmm. And then you can integrate the real time information. So the performance twin is a step beyond an asset twin. An asset twin, while it's a digital manual of facility, a performance twin starts giving you, just like with maps, how, how it starts giving you information about the traffic and the roads and the uh, and, and the hotels and, and all the other information, the occupancy of different places. Likewise, the performance twin starts giving us the real time uh, performance data, drives analytics, drives anomaly detection, uh, drives all of the outcomes that you need to operate assets effectively, which then lends itself to a number of use cases or applications that are driven by it. So a digital twin is, is a process. It's not a product. It's a set of tools, a set of solutions that you create, but it's founded on data, it's founded on good information management during the design development process of an asset. So in, 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 in summary, uh, we have to seize the opportunity today. I mean, as, as practitioners in the industry today, we can make sure that every single development, every new development can be delivered as a digital twin, at least as an asset twin, uh, to add value to the BIM process and create value for the asset owner. Uh, it needs to be conceived early, so it's not an afterthought. The more early, the earlier we start working on a digital twin strategy, the better outcomes we get. Handover is the last opportunity for for contractors to uh, to end up end a, end a project and create a great impression for the, with the clients. And digital twins are a great way to get that done and get projects signed off and and closed out. Um, and lastly, uh, but not the least, let's keep in mind that to meet the Paris Climate Agreement goals. Buildings have to decarbonize 100% by 2050, 80% by 2030. So, which means digital twins are going to be vital to help achieve that outcome. So, 
Information management, driving a BIM process with data is vital to all of these outcomes. And that concludes my presentation. Thank you. Thank you.